this week on Crossfeed. Was Jesus the result of Mary being raped? Christian license plates in Florida. The Pope's visit, did it help? Methodist transgender clergy. Was Carly Smithson voted off for apostasy? Everybody, welcome to this month's edition of CrossFit News. <laughs> <laughs> I am Dr. Jim Butler out in beautiful Dead of Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley in Delaware, Iowa. Man, it's been a long time. So we apologize to everybody for taking um, about a month. Uh, and it was just... Just a number of, of kind of strange uh, things going on between um, different schedule conflicts, and um, I had a flood, and <laughs> just all kinds of chaos. So I had a vacation to um, Florida, so that's where I got my new cool Spider-Man shirt, you know, <laughs> and uh, everybody going down there, of course... Uh, uh, you know, anybody going to, to, to Islands Adventure can tell you that it, it is a just a, a Spider-Man ride. It's absolutely wonderful. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Well, I've been hauling stuff because our basement flooded and now our house is full of boxes and our garage is full of boxes and our um, we've got our car parked out in the driveway. We can't get it in the garage because it's full of boxes. So... Now we're waiting to find out because uh, the carpeting couldn't be saved because this is the second time we've flooded in the past six years. And so the we're kind of waiting for our congregation to decide, since this is a parsonage, uh, what they're going to do. Are they going to put in new carpeting? Are they going to just, uh, you know, that's kind of one end of the spectrum. The other end is like painting the floor and, and just leaving it concrete and all kinds of options in between. And so... We're just kind of waiting, and we have fans and dehumidifiers and stuff running down there, so it's been fun, but not really. <laughs> well, do they have um, they they have flood insurance on the the parsonage, right? Uh, uh-uh. no, no, because it, it's it costs so much. flood insurance is so expensive that I mean it's it's not it's really not worth it. And really, the only thing that was damaged was the carpeting, which I mean is a pretty major thing, but um, but nothing else of significance, you know, was damaged. Some books, it was, it was kind of funny. My kids, they were really upset because we had to throw away some books, and I mean, like to them, books are like good friends, you know, and like, oh no, I love that book, and like, um, we can get another copy, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a one of a kind thing. But, uh, you know, nothing serious was, it's just a lot of sorting. You know, it's one of those things we planned on sorting through all the stuff. So we have a lot of baby clothes and stuff we never got rid of. And, um, it was like, eh, you know what? That was a good time to sort through all that and get rid of a bunch of junk. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's my chaos. No, I'm chaos and he's mayhem. We're a double act. Hang on here just a second. We interrupt your regular broadcast to bring you this important news bulletin. I'm waiting! Okay. Um, where should we start our stories at tonight here? Um. Oh, let's begin with American Idol. Okay. I mean, you know... I can I I I can insult Carly Carly Hennessy Smithson all day long. So uh. <laughs> here's the actual for those watching the video. It's um, behind me is the actual uh, clip in question. Uh, now, I, Jim, you watch American Idol, yes, right? And I don't. Uh, my wife does. And so generally I'm sitting at my computer with my back to the TV, kind of listening while she's watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but, but here's the, here's the question. Was she voted off 
because she offended a bunch of Christians for singing Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, well, first off, I'm not sure. She really wasn't singing it, she was shouting it. <laughs> I, mean, I always like watching her sing, because when she opens her mouth to hit this note, she looks like her head's about to explode. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and for an, yeah, I mean, she's the $2 million amateur. She was signed oh, to a, yeah. uh, she was signed to a contract by MCA when she was 18 for $2 million, sold 375 records. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think that's why she got voted off, is people finally started finding out that she'd had this professional background. Um, and she couldn't sing that very well. See, there is a, a rumor going around that because she sang Jesus Christ Superstar, that this was considered blasphemous, and that uh, the, all the the Christians said, "Oh, well, you know, we're gonna vote her off because she sang a blasphemous song." But uh, we have a it's 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 a blog that said, um, "No, that's kind of ridiculous." This is a rumor that was going around, but it said, first of all. Um, you know, there may be a few people who were up in arms about it, but it couldn't have been enough to matter. He said, I suppose the song, when dissected, could be deemed offensive to the highly religious, but I doubt that the kind of people who would be offended by the song's message would have delved so deep into the song's meaning. Alternately, I'd imagine the typical visceral, rea visceral reaction to Jesus Christ Superstar by highly religious people would be one of delight. Jesus, he's a superstar. That's something that might interest the religious. Okay, I kind of... <laughs> object to that. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, no. I mean, in all seriousness, um, if you remember, um, well, you wouldn't. You're too young. You were probably being born about the time that the, the, the rock opera came out. I was in, like, sixth grade at the time. And um, when the original one was originally on Broadway, let alone the movie. And... I remember people buying uh, buying the record. Um, I actually remember listening to parts of the, the rock opera in school. Uh, the theme song was on the radio. It was a top ten song. I mean, so, no, that had nothing to do with her getting off. It was just people, it was time for her to go. People were sick of seeing the tattoo on her arm. And seeing her <laughs> husband's scary tattoos all over his face. Fear of a name only increases fear of the oh. thing itself. So it, he also points out that uh, uh, David Archuleta uh, saying "Imagine," which, if you're going to offend somebody with a song, if you're going to offend Christians, that's the song right there. <laughs> oh, so, although I mean, he didn't sing the first verse, so the whole part about "Imagine there's no religion and no heaven, no hell" that wasn't in there. So, uh, oh, he just skipped that. Yeah, he skipped that. Cause, okay. Well, they had to take a cutting from the song, so he he went with a third verse, a third stanza. Wise decision. Yes, it was. But see, because I, I hear that song come on, if I'm listening to the radio and Imagine comes on, I change the station. Not that I listen to the radio all that much. I'm usually listening to my iPod, but uh, I mean that's that's one song I just can't stand to listen to. Mm -hmm. I have it on my iPod. <laughs> I Great. do like Not it. Not much people turn their iPods it. off. <laughs> you know. Although, <clears throat> I do recall a friend of mine who said that his, uh, that he, uh, uh, this couple asked if uh, they could play that while she walked down the aisle. <laughs> Oh, I'm just picturing that being played in a church. Of course, it's really no more ironic than the other songs that are typically played at weddings. I mean, like, Here Comes the Bride, which is from A Midsummer's Night's Dream, and it's basically just a it's a, a farce of a wedding. And then there's that, that one by, what is it, Wagner, who is very anti-Christian and, and would have gotten a real kick out of his stuff being played in a uh, in a in a Christian church. <laughs> so. so yeah, odd things, but no, I don't think that's what uh, 
got uh, 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 Carly Smithson off there. Um, you know, there were some people who really disliked her, um, especially the uh, uh, crew at uh, VoteForTheWorst.com, who probably don't watch this podcast, but hi, Dave, anyway. Um, <laughs> it's one of my favorite little uh, websites to go to, and they just simply encourage you to vote for the person they think is the worst person on American Idol, just to screw everything up. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was sort of like the Democratic primary yeah kind of like that kind of like you know, <laughs> but um they never um they never liked her Actually, did you hear about that this is this is completely off the subject speaking of the democratic primaries that the uh, um in in pennsylvania there was a whole bunch of of people switched from republican to democrat just shortly before the um the pennsylvania primary and so they figure that these people switched over just to vote for Hillary, just to keep the um, just to keep the arguing going on between Hillary <laughs> and Barack. Well, you know what uh, Bill Rogers once said: "I don't belong to an organized political party. I'm a Democrat." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. Uh, so uh, no, no. But we'll see. I, I, I'll tell you what was really kind of interesting. Um, well, last year they had um, uh, Chris Sly, who was an American Idol, who was a pastor's kid and had gone to Bob Jones University, and Phil Stacy, who also was very strongly Christian, and this uh, other woman, Mandisa, who was strongly Christian. And this year they had a um, couple of them who kind of wore their, their faith out on their sleeve. Uh, one of them who was eliminated last week, Brooke White, who two or three times talked about going to church and uh, things that happened there. And Oh, and uh, Christy Lee Crook, the cook, who uh, on one of her interviews had a uh, a shirt with a cross on it and a couple other things and talking about her faith. So it's kind of neat to see some of these people who, who really do wear their, their heart out on their sleeve a little bit and their faith out there. So, <clears throat> But no, yeah. I don't think Jesus Christ superstar got her off there <laughs> well speaking of voting let's go to florida since you were just there yes i was just there um for those watching the video behind me is a sample of uh, literally says sample um of a proposed license plate and for those who are who can't read it or um who are listening to the audio, it is. it has a picture of a cross um, superimposed over a stained glass window, and it says on the bottom, I believe. And the idea is to offer, um, as the uh, Edward Bullard, who is sponsoring it, says, uh, people who believe in their college or university or believe in their football team already have license plates they can buy. The new design is a chance for others to put a tag on their cars with something they believe in. Um, I have a couple disagreements. One is one is, on, on, a couple of views on this. Is one is um, uh, I disagree with the ACLU. The ACLU, ACLU said, uh, guy from Florida said, um, it sends a message that a Florida is essentially a Christian state. It gives the appearance that the state is endorsing a particular religious preference. Well, I disagree. I don't think it does that at all. I mean, because you have to pay 25 extra dollars in order to get this. <laughs> and so I think this is a statement that you're making. However, at the same time, um, this guy not, would not be comfortable if they were to make a uh, Florida license plate that said, I don't believe. Um, and mm -hmm. another member said uh, she would be uncomfortable, um, you know, uh, it's not a road I want to go down. I don't want to see the Star of David next. I don't want to see a Torah next. None of that stuff is appropriate to me, uh, said Kelly Skidmore, a Roman Catholic who goes to Mass on Sundays. And Get a it? Not a road I want to go down? <laughs> but, you know, I um, there was a, a, a comment about this, and I, I don't know if I put it up or not from the Christianity Today blog. In which uh, the guy, you know, argued. He said, "If you go by this argument to accept this, 
if the Church of Satan wanted to have a, a license, then you'd, you'd essentially have to do that because the state has to remain religiously neutral. Right. Or fly, flying spaghetti monster, for that matter. That's right. Or the flying spaghetti monster. Um, but no, uh, that would be a cool license plate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but that's you know, I, I, you know, Representative Skidmore is absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just really a question. I don't think there's. I don't know. I mean, you know, do you want to see stars of David? Do you want to see uh, um, stars and crescents? Um, I mean, where does that stop for the state, and how does the See, state make that judgment? I figure if you get, if you want something on your car that says, hey, I'm a Christian, then just stick one of those fish logos on it, or a bumper sticker, or, you know, I mean, or, 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 or paint the car for that matter with a big old I believe thing, or, you know, whatever you want to do. But, yeah, I just, I just think that if the... Um, if the state would sponsor something like this, I mean, you're just opening a huge can of worms. Now, there have been other uh, license plates uh, in Florida and other places that have been questionable. Uh, in 2004, they approved the motto, Family Values. Um, and uh, they also suggested with the same bill, uh, In God We Trust plate, which uh, Indiana has. And that would benefit uh, soldiers and their families. Now, the In God We Trust one, that's a little different because it's not promoting one particular religion. I mean, this thing has a cross on it. So it's very clearly a Christian one. But In God We Trust is pretty generic. It's not promoting any one religion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you could argue that it's promoting religion per se, but that's not unconstitutional. Well, it's just promoting you, the, one specific one. In God We Trust is still the national motto. Right. Right. You know, so, so in God We Trust, all others pay cash. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the other um, debatable one was the Choose Life one. It was in 1999, and that one was approved. And so you can you can get a, a choose life plate and said that gives money to uh, agencies that encourage women not to have abortions. Mm-hmm. It's bright yellow, has a picture of a boy and girl. It said again, it had religious overtones. I'm not sure how it could have religious overtones. I mean, uh, Bernard Nathanson was an absolute atheist who became you know very active in the pro-life movement. Um, just because you happen to be pro-life does not necessarily make you religious. All right. Yeah, I know a lot of, uh, well, okay, not a lot, I guess, but I know a handful of atheists who are, who used to be actually be uh, pro-abortion, pro-choice, whatever term you want to use, and um, and that they became pro-life just because they could not answer the question, where do you draw the line? Mm-hmm. And so finally they said, you know what, there is no consistent way to draw a line here to say this is a person and this is not. So, um, yeah, I, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. It hasn't been approved yet, and I personally hope that it's not approved. Yeah, you know, again, it, it's just a hard thing. Where, here it is, actually, you're asking the same question, where do you draw the line? I mean, um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, on what basis does the state say yes to one group, no to another group? And if you say, well, you know, people got the right to stay what they believe in their license plate. Well, once you go, once you make, once you use the term right, what they believe, then yeah, it's what whatever you happen to believe. Whether, I mean, uh, one person said, you know, uh, you know, uh, um, the guy from the ACLU, and I think this is a good argument, says the plate could prompt other groups to seek their own designs, which. And they could claim discrimination. Their plans were rejected. It could even allow the KKK to get a plate. Yeah. See, what I'd like to see is, um, you know, we, we live in an age where of, you know, desktop publishing and, and all that kind of stuff. I would love to see, and I know this is completely impractical, design your own license plate. You know, you, like, download some software, you design it, 
there's something built in to make sure there's enough contrast between the background and the the actual license number, you know. Um, and then, but then you you just like upload it, and then you go down a couple weeks later to the DMV, and and there's your license plate. <laughs> And you know you could put anything you want on it, and there there'd have to be some kind of you know rules as far as uh, uh, decency and you know that kind of thing. But you know then then you could have like you could, you know you could have a, a Spider-Man <laughs> license plate. That would be that'd cool. be cool. <laughs> Only I, of course, I'd have a Superman license plate, but that's all right. But um, right. now on a, on a, now in Massachusetts, of course, um, it was interesting that when they started putting out license plate numbers. They actually went in numerical order. So the first license plate number in Massachusetts was the number one. So one of the big things for the politicians of the state is to, and you know you've got some real clout, is if you get a low-numbered license plate. You're crazy. Because there's a waiting list on those things, and they get handed down in families. But if you know somebody, you know some family dies out, they don't renew it or something. Then yeah, if you got political clout, that's how you know because you you get number you know twenty twenty six or whatever it is you know, and that's that's a status symbol of the state. <laughs> that's sad. Only in Massachusetts. <laughs> but if they made the license plate, would Paul Van Hooven then make a uh, movie about it? <laughs> Oh, Paul Verhoeven. Verhoeven, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Picture. Get him Where up he? there. There he is. All right, this is the guy that directed uh, Basic Instinct and RoboCop and Total Recall and Starship Troopers. And Showgirls. Uh, Don't forget Showgirls. And, and, and Showgirls. Sorry. <laughs> You know, the and, uh, 19 golden raspberries right there, you know, I mean, or 9 <laughs> or 19, what are the others, so. Well, he's uh, he's got a book coming out because he's, I mean, <laughs> all right, he majored in. Uh, he has a PhD in math uh, and he's physics. Got a, math and physics. And so what's he writing a book? He's writing a history biography <laughs> because. You know, he has so much of an education in that. Um, but he decided to write the most realistic portrayal of Jesus ever published. And according to him, Jesus was the son of, well, as he put it, was probably the son of Mary and a Roman soldier who raped her during the Jewish uprising in Galilee. Wow, this is pretty clever. Um, given that this, uh, this idea has been around since like what? First, second century, something like that. And he just came up with it now. Which Jewish uprising in Galilee? <laughs> I was digging around because I, I remember hearing about this in, uh, in seminary, and it's it appears in this uh, suggestion appears in one of the targums, I believe. And um, but I, I, you know, I know I heard of some other like historian. See, I wanted to say it was like Papias or something like that. I can't remember who it was though, and I can't. I I digged. I, I dig. I dug around for a while um, online to try to find the the author that um, that said this, and, and I couldn't find it. But this was, yeah, this this isn't some new brilliant idea that he came up with. Um, this is called, you know, this is this is the same camp as um, when uh, when Jesus rose from the dead, and the um, the sol- Roman soldiers went to the Pharisees and and said. Uh, Oh, you know, the stone rolled away and there was an angel and all this stuff and, and the Pharisees gave him hush money. You know. And and so here's another, you know, oh well let's uh let's explain this. You know, they're, they're trying to apply I don't know, I guess you could almost call this Occam's razor, you know. What's the what's the simplest explanation for her being pregnant? Well, uh she must have been raped. And 
but and then she just came up with this story because it would be uh i don't know make her unclean or something like that right uh the um now the uh that particular story i don't know about um in um um <clears throat> In origin, in against Celsius, wrote um, uh, 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 in the book. In 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 that thing, origin says that Celsius wrote, uh, "When she married, was pregnant, she was turned out of doors by the carpenter to whom she'd been betrothed, having been guilty of adultery, and that she bore a child to a certain soldier named Panthera." That's the one I was thinking of. Yes, um, Celsius. And uh, 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 and then there's people who think that may have been a reference reference to uh, Tiberius Ilias Abdus Pantera from a 1966 book La Vita di Gesù, uh, and argues that. So yeah, it's, it's it goes back to uh, the days of origin is what you're thinking about. Um, no, there's nothing that new about it. Uh, I mean, he's part of the Jesus Seminar, which I think is kind of interesting. I mean, you got these New Testament scholars and, you know, with the director of Showgirls, uh, debating, you know, and, and you know, the basic theory of, uh, of the, of the, um, the Jesus Seminar is that Jesus didn't say anything. You know, I mean, but if you've ever read the five gospels, you know, their, their, their take there on, you know, and they put in, you know, black what Jesus didn't say, gray what he probably didn't say, pink what he might have said, and red what he did say. I think the word the is in red. <laughs> you know, but other words, yeah, right, pretty I'm much. Not sure. The, you know, I think he may have said God too. Okay, a couple places, but I mean, you know, basically, as far as they're concerned, the entire gospel. All, all four Gospels, well, all five, because they take the Gospel of Thomas as, as equal to the canonical Gospels. Uh, but, you know, it's all made up by the Church. You know, Jesus, you know, basically, he was just this guy who walked through, and the Church just, you know, kind of planted all their ideas on him. He was kind of a, a tabula rasa there. They, they just, you know, they just kind of made him to whatever they wanted him to be. There's some great uh, quotes from here from... Uh... Uh, uh, Bill Donahue, he's the president of the Catholic League. <laughs> he says, here we go again with idle speculation grounded in absolutely nothing. He has no empirical evidence to support his claim, which is why they say he may have. <laughs> he says, he worked on the book for 20 years only to come up with a probably. <laughs> and he says, it's a European version of Hollywood. He should go back to Ster Sharon Stone's legs. <laughs> Oh, good grief. Um, if not Elizabeth Berkeley's. Anyway, so, um, uh, I'm sorry. Anybody who gets, you know, all those golden raspberries has got to be my, my kind of guy, you know, I tell you. See, you know, I was thinking about this and I was thinking about the movies. I haven't seen Showgirls. I haven't seen Basic Instinct. All right. Neither but I have I. seen Robocop. Um, and, and I've seen Total Recall and I like both of those. And so I was thinking that, you know, this guy, if he, if he really spent 20 years on this, he could have come up with some much better theories. I mean, I spent five minutes thinking about it, not even. And then and I was thinking, how about she had fake memories planted in her, you know, like in Total Recall? See, now Never that would Total make Recall. for a much better book. Oh. Uh, the whole thing is about implanting memories, and you know, uh, basically, you you don't have to go on vacation. You just go into this place, and you have fake memories of the vacation implanted. And uh, that's kind of the premise of the movie. But see, see, you could do something like that. She just had these fake memories implanted, or you know, maybe Jesus was a cyborg. You know. <laughs> That could explain the resurrection. <laughs> he died on the cross, but then they took his body and implanted it in a robot, and then he's he's, he's Robo Christ. See, if you get a if you know if you, if you get a take the the uh, 
the gospel is easy. You to take the Bible and rip it apart. Get creative with it already. I mean, you know, but you none see, of these goofy ideas that have been around for thousands of years. But you see, he had script writers for those ideas. Oh, yeah, you're right. He was just the director. So, you know. Well, maybe he needs a ghostwriter for his book. Yeah, I, I'll write it. I can come up with some real good stuff for him. You have to pay me a lot, though. <laughs> Well, I mean, he was going to, I don't know if he's still going to, at one time he was going to make a movie out of, about the life of Jesus based on the research out of the Jesus seminar. <clears throat> but I said, that, I said <laughs> there wouldn't be much to it. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like a short film. <laughs> Ten minutes, you know? Duh. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, it's, it's the whole problem with form criticism, because the idea of that, you know, all this is, you know, made up by the church, and you have to peel back the layers to find out what Jesus really said and what Jesus was really like. Um, no, we, we take the Gospels as they stand. I mean, and, and there is nothing in, there's no other literature in all the new, in, in, in history. That's as well attested to as as the as the books of the New Testament. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if we didn't even, yeah. have, I mean, I mean it, the, the 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 number of copies that exist, um, the fact that the, there's so much agreement uh, and everything else. I mean, it's just um, you, you can't get around it. And to to say, you know, this is the realistic portrait of Jesus. Well, realistic by your own creation. But certainly mm -hmm. not realistic in terms of what the church has always believed. Yeah. You know, the other thing is form criticism is laziness. You know, this is is like, well, we read this passage in the Bible and and hmm, I don't know what that means. Jesus never said that. Then we don't need to worry about what it means. <laughs> I was. I remember when I was in seminary and I was trying to do research papers on different texts from the Bible, and so you go and you start reading through theological journals, and it's 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 all this this junk, this form criticism junk. And it's like, okay, you're not actually addressing the text. You're just talking about what you know what was really said or what you know and all this kind of stuff, and they never get around to the actual text, like. You lazy, just look at the actual text. Look at it in its context. You know, look at it in the context of not only its immediate context, but the context of Scripture. Then tell me what it means. Instead of, you know, this is the equivalent of when you have uh, uh, scientists that, uh, instead of trying to find cures for diseases or things like that, they're too busy following the evolutionary paths of these different bacteria or supposedly and, you know, and they waste their time on all that that has absolutely no value whatsoever. But, you know, they spend all this time on that instead of actually doing something useful. Yep. But, uh, well, here's hoping the director and, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, maybe he'll be better in his next movie, Showgirls and Jesus. Um, I was thinking Starship Jesus. Starship Jesus, okay. He could get together with the Scientologists or the Mormons. That's true. That would work. Oh, but as long as we're talking about uh, what does the Bible say and what doesn't it say, and let's let it say whatever we want it to, um, <clears throat> let's deal with um, the... Um, uh, United Methodists and the transgender clergy. Now, we talked about this in the past. Uh, a woman who uh, became a man and uh, all the while being a pastor now goes by the name of Drew Phoenix. And uh, the uh, basically the Court, the Supreme Court of the Methodist Church, uh, said, well, 
Um, we've got stuff on homosexuality, but we don't have anything on transgender people, so I guess we're going to let it go. Well, since they're uh, getting together uh, for their general uh, conference. national general conference, uh, they're saying, hey, we better talk about this. Now, I have not heard what... Um what decision they actually made. Because, um, of course, now they're, they are they finished up their general conference on May the 2nd. Uh, they did decide to re- keep the, the, the language of homosexuality the same. So that did not okay. change at all. But I did not hear how they what, what decision they made about uh, Drew Phoenix here. I am not a committee! Yeah, I guess that passed, isn't it? A couple days. I'll have to do a follow up on that. So, but, uh, yeah, this is a. I mean, you know, we kind of already talked about it. The, you know, the thing that that really caught my attention was the uh, the president of the Council of Bishops. Uh, she said uh, it's uh, Janice Regal Huey. Um, the transgender discussion will be a first for a general conference. She couldn't predict his outcome, but she hopes delegates can move beyond it to direct their attention to a broader agenda addressing issues such as global health and church leadership. In other words, there's an elephant in the room. I don't want to deal with it, so let's talk about something else. We can resolve our differences peacefully. I mean, you know, this is a huge thing because this, I mean, this gets at how do we understand the Bible? Uh, hopefully. That's part of the discussion, you know, um, and and how do we understand uh, gender, uh, you know, and 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 who we are as human beings, and I mean, this is a this is a pretty major thing, and you know, in in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, it wouldn't even be a topic of discussion because it would have never been allowed in the first place, right? But if you're going to open that barn door, uh, you need to talk about you know, all the cows getting out and and what are you going to do about it? You know, is that acceptable or not? You need to reach some kind of decision. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, that's always, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, well, I mean, their, 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 their slogan is open hearts, open minds. Um, concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. Open doors. <clears throat> Sorry, open... Open hearts, open minds, open what? Doors. Open doors. I mean, you know, so yeah. now all of a sudden you're, you, you have to say, well, we can't be that open. Yeah. How open are we? So you have groups, uh, Affirmation, which is an advocacy group for uh, GLBT Methodists. And uh, they say that, well, you know, if you're going to uh, have legislation that disapproves this kind of operation, then that doesn't reflect a denomination with that kind of a slogan. And uh, whereas on the other side, uh, another group called the Institute on Religion and Democracy's UM Action, um, they said that it would uh, disapprove this kind of operation and would affirm biological gender as a divine gift. You know, so, you know, so here's the question. Is this, is this, is, is this a, you know, God made me this way, all right? Or is this a result, is, is, is transgenderism the result of the fall? And I would say it definitely is. But is it, because, you know, you can't say, well, God made me this way and, and therefore I can act however I want. The question is, is the, the, the flaw that's a result of the fall a physical flaw or a mental flaw? A very nice brain. In other words, is you being a, you know, a woman in a man's body or vice versa, right? Is that uh, because there's something wrong with your brain that doesn't match your body, or is it there's something wrong with your body that doesn't match your brain? I have no idea what that meant. That's a good question. So, 
I'm not sure. I'm just actually overlooking the um, Methodist uh, website now about their um, thing, but I can't find anything. I can't find where it says anything actually about that on any of the headlines. Uh, the big news, I guess, for for uh, uh, Lutherans, of course, is that they voted to go into full communion with the ELCA. Mm. Uh, Weren't they already? No. No. This would be a, a full recognition of the, the, the Episcopalians are, the Reformed are, but not the United Methodist Church. Well, gee, the Methodists and the ELCA churches have been doing joint services around here for years. Well, yeah, but but they, they they're not fully um, in full communion with each other, and then you can't call a Methodist pastor to a Lutheran church but after they should be. Able to oh, okay. Be All right, that makes sense. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a totally another thing that I don't understand. Now, there's one other thing in this article um, that was of interest. I don't know if you saw anything about this one on there, but that is uh, there was a proposal to uh, boycott or to withdraw church investments in Caterpillar Incorporated. You know, the guys make the bulldozers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know why the church is investing in a bulldozer company. But, because it's a very good one. Um, it makes money. Its stock is very doing very well. I suppose. But see, I mean, you know, I mean, buy, it's like our our cordial plants are invested in different stocks. You know. I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. But they uh, there's a a petition because they said that the caterpillar machines are used uh, by Israelis to raise Palestinian homes in olive groves. And so they're saying, hey, they're using their bulldozers to um, to knock down Palestinian homes, and, and that's not right. And so we should not be, you know, investing in their company. Uh, to which Caterpillar basically said, Caterpillar cannot monitor the use of every piece of its equipment around the world. <laughs> However, we recognize the responsibility companies have to encourage the constructive use of their products. Hey, somebody used a craftsman hammer to kill somebody. We shouldn't buy craftsman hammers anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. Yeah, that's that kind yeah. of interesting stuff is there. Uh, although I did come and see something that 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 did fail. That they weren't going to di disinvest in these companies that uh, <clears throat> did business in and sold things to um, Israel. So yeah, that one did fail. So, but uh, kind of strange. I, you know, I, you know, I mean, I, I can say understand why, you know, in some reasons why some groups would do, would do that, but I just don't think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, but let's move on. Well, I guess maybe maybe it would help if we understood things better. And uh, with that in mind. Uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, better known now as Benedict, as, as B, uh, Benedict the Sixteenth. Actually, I've I seen him referred to a lot as B sixteen. <laughs> um, it's like B one and B two. Yeah, I've seen him. You know, B twelve. You know, oh, we've got well, him in a little well, red well, hat again, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and and we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> We got some comments about that. Yes. Now, B1 and B2, anybody out there? Uh, it's an Australian uh, kids show. That There's a couple characters uh, that are, and it, the, the name of the show, anybody? All right, I'll, I'll just say it because I'm right in if, if you knew before I told you. And it's called Bananas in Pajamas. Great show. I've heard of the show. I've heard of the show. So, Didn't he doesn't look much like a banana. Good day there, mate. Good day. Hey, that's really appealing. <laughs> yeah, mate. Anyway, um... Uh, You're probably not going to be in a Paul Verhoeven movie anytime soon. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be in any movie for a while. But anyway, be all that as it may. 
Uh, so our, uh, so, so, uh, B-16 came to America and it, it wasn't. In case anybody missed it, since it was like all the news networks for like Pope TV. <laughs> It's uh, constant. I don't know. I I mean I I didn't think it was quite the 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 uh, uh, news that it was when uh, John Paul came to America the first time. I mean that was almost uh, yeah, that was that was just about crazy. Uh, but his probably the the most important thing, of course, that he did was met with um, um, and it was interesting. It's actually because. Uh, that, as Reuters puts, says that one of the, the emotional high points was his surprise meeting with victims who'd been sexually abused by priests in the Boston Archdiocese. Um, and then, you know, after that, he said he was deeply ashamed and promised, uh, you know, to exclude pedophile priests from the church. And, uh, and I, I believe he really did believe that. You know, yeah. I think he was very sincere in that. And I think that showed a lot of empathy and humility. Um, I think it was very good for him to, to sit with these families and visit and, and, and express that, that, uh, pain, you know, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, of course, for us was, uh, you know, that he had the ecumenical service in, um, uh, well, actually, he the Roman Catholic led a, 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 a service at St. Patrick's Cathedral, a prayer evening prayer service, and they invited different people to be there. And our, our synodical president, Dr. Gerald Kishnick, was there. Uh, the head of our commission on theology, uh, Samuel Napster, was there. And the Atlantic District uh, president, uh, David Banky, was there, which was really kind of a quite an honor for him to be invited. It was because of his uh, pro-life work and... In, in, uh, up there in, in New York that he was asked to be in. Anyway, as uh, the, he went by and uh, shook uh, the Pope's hand, and he, you know, said, you know, we of the Missouri Synod give you greetings. And uh, he says that the Pope looked up and smiled and says, the Missouri Synod? <sighs> Please greet them for me. Does he realize that one of the Missouri Sands official doctrines is that the office of the papacy is the Antichrist? Um, I think so, but he, you know, he has great respect for us because of our doctrinal integrity. Yeah. Even if he yeah, disagrees with you know, it, Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It, the, the fact is that we do definitely have a lot of differences uh, with Rome, but we've got a lot in common with them, and... I mean, quite frankly, more and more uh, when you've got this kind of Jesus seminar goofiness going on and, you know, just so much of the stuff that we talk about on our show uh, that is going on in different churches and things like that. And and it's the kind of stuff that just it doesn't happen, you know, uh, around in in our church body. And 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 there's just there's only a handful of of church bodies where that's the case. I know it sounds like, hey, look at how great we are and stuff, but, you know, I should put it this way. You know, I've got a, a pastor's conference uh, tomorrow, actually. I'm <laughs> taking this long to edit it, but, <laughs> but uh, no, not really. I'll be paying attention most of the time. Who will you be paying and, attention to? I can't even remember what the topic is, so I guess it remains to be seen. But, uh, the, you know, we don't, you don't get resolutions and, and things like this, you know? I mean, the, 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 probably the biggest, most controversial thing that'll be going on is the discussion of issues, et cetera, uh, which for those who are not familiar with it, <laughs> which is probably quite a few people since they only had like 1600 listeners, <laughs> um, is, uh, it was, a uh, uh, Religious news show, um, not so much like ours. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a, a radio program on KFUO, which is the Synod's radio station, and it was canceled rather abruptly. And a lot of people are real up in arms about it. Uh, I, I wasn't real thrilled 
because it was available as a podcast and um I've listened to it in the past, not recently, but um it was a pretty good show. If I had more time I'd listen to it more often. Um got too many other podcasts to listen to. But um it you know, so there's a lot of controversy that we have going on as far as what what's the deal that it was all of a sudden because it was losing money. Um it was eating money like crazy from the station. But uh you know, people are saying, uh, you know, what else is going on with this? Why was it just all of a sudden we didn't hear anything about it, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. Um, but, you know, so we're dealing with stuff like that. Um, you know, it's it's not, the answer to the question is not, because the pastor who was the host of the program is now a woman, you know. <laughs> so. When will this insanity end? So, no, it was, I, I think it was good that um, that he came and addressed this. Um, I do, you know, I was, I was at my dad's place and, uh, and he had Fox News on and, 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 which was, you know, Pope TV and, um, he, uh, he's, he's watching the, the Pope kind of walking through and shaking these people's hands and they're all getting all excited and everything. And my dad turns to me and he says, how many people there are thinking about Jesus? I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I said, that's a good point. You know, his coming, the the focus was on, you know, Cardinal Ratzinger. It was on the Pope. It was not on Jesus. And while certainly he came to talk about Jesus, among other topics, um... I, you know, I, I just, I question how much this actually helped anybody's faith and, and brought them closer to Christ. You know, well, I, I don't know, because I, I can say that I, um, um, you know, I missed it by one year. Um, the year before I graduated, in 1997, the year before I graduated with my D-Men, Billy Graham was the commencement speaker at Gordon Conwell. He was stepping down from the board of trustees. Although he did sign my, my, my uh, diploma. So, uh, got, got a signature on there. Now, I mean. Mm. Wonder what she can get, um, on eBay for that. I don't know. But, <laughs> but I was in a real hope, I was really hopeful that I would be able to, um, uh, be there and uh, listen to him and, 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 and do, you know, listen to him at the commencement and stuff, you know, it'd be kind of cool. My thought really wasn't on, uh, you know, Jesus there. My thought was on getting to listen to this guy, you know, who, you know, seeing him and, and having him shake my hand when I got my diploma, you know, and I could say I shook Billy Graham's hand, you know, that'd be, that'd get me to heaven easily, you know, that'd be cool. <laughs> so I think it's kind of the same type of thing. There is a, a certain, celebrity status about the Holy Father, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and I think that, 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 that does, you know, wear off. I think in, in the case of these families that he met with, I think it did, may have impacted their faith. Some of them were very much wounded, and I think, you know, that showed integrity. I think that showed uh, for them a, a willingness of the church to, 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 to hurt with them and to, you know, believe what the, about the pain they've gone through. Now, for them, yes. And uh, for you know the people that he met with personally, to to that, that have had these struggles, that you know that were really suffering, that that he came and spoke with, yeah, I think that was a good thing. I think it was necessary. But the 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 kind of going down the street and the parade, shaking people's hands, kind of stuff. <laughs> I you know. He should have put on a sign that, or a, a, put on a, a t-shirt that said, not me, Jesus, you know? He could have gotten one of Florida's, I believe, license plates and stuck it on the automobile. <laughs> Boy, no control. There you go. Full circle. <laughs> And he got ahead of Carly Smithson singing in the background. <laughs> yeah, or not. 
I mean, she, she, she's Irish, so she'd be Catholic. <laughs> it would work. Benedict, superstar, you know. <laughs> the syllables work so, out. Yeah. <laughs> now, there was a, a survey that was done um, that was asking what kind of how people felt did did he say enough and, and all that kind of stuff. And I said uh, 58% of those polled said they were satisfied with his apologies for the scandal. Um, and 55% that he spent about the right amount of time talking about it, 20% too little, 24% unsure, One only 1% said he spoke too much about it. 32% believe sufficient steps had been taken to avoid a repetition of the scandal. 46% said that more had to be done. So, you know, people are saying, yeah, he, you know, what he did in this visit was, seemed to be about right. Although, I mean, 58% is not a huge majority, but, um, I don't know. Hey, you know, if you want to, if you want an election with 58% of the vote, people, that, that's considered a landslide. True. I mean, Hillary Clinton took so. Pennsylvania 55 to 45, and, you know, that was a trouncing. So, yeah, that's a pretty good, uh, uh, um, pretty good, you know, really sized group about it. Um, uh, I mean, you know, 55, it's 50, you know, 5% said he spent the right amount of time dealing with it, and 24% said they were unsure. So, you know, that's, if you take those unsure votes as well, I, I, I really, I think so. I mean, there are, there was some appreciation at least that he did talk about it. He was not sure yeah, you kind of have to compare that with the twenty percent that said too little. You know, if you just take those numbers, then it's you know that's a pretty significant amount there. All right. Uh, and the other thing is that sixty-five percent of Americans said they now had a more positive view of the Pope. Fifty-two uh, percent they said they had a more positive view of the Catholic Church, and um, <clears throat> and. Uh, 40% said they were now more likely to lead a moral life. <laughs> For how long? Yeah. That's a good question, but, you know, at least for a while anyway. Hey, I like his hat. I like his hat. Speaking of the Holy Father, we had an interesting comment uh, that came across from... Uh, this is yeah, this is up on YouTube. And it came from um, YouTube a while back. And, a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, and so he, this uh, is in response to our last episode. Yeah, this is uh, from um, Scotty19855. And he said, I'd be interested to know what your seminary formation actually included. I'm stunned by your ignorance surrounding many of the issues discussed on your, your show. I make particular reference to your complete lack of respect for A, the Pope, and B, the teachings and authority of the Church. Also, I don't think your behavior or attitudes are fitting for clergymen. Forgive me for being so blunt, but I think you need to examine the purpose of what your show should be. God bless. Dale responded. Hi, Scotty. Dale has a Master of Divinity, Jim, and Doctor of Ministry. We show the Pope the same respect we show any other clergy, including each other. You should note that we're not Roman Catholic. We're LCMS Lutherans and thus historically disagree with much of the papacy. Please keep in mind this show is not a sermon. It's intended to be fun, and we don't take ourselves too seriously. We poke fun at ourselves more than anything else. Could you define authority of the church? And Scott, I replied, forgive me, I realize I was referring to the church's authority means little as, firstly, a definition of the church are obviously very different, and secondly, your denial of her authority is inherited by your Protestantism. I wish you all the best, and hope one day you come to accept and embrace the one true faith. Well, Scotty, I think we do accept and embrace the one true faith. Um, <clears throat> that is just not as Rome would see it. Uh, indeed, the uh, uh, the we, it is called the Christian Book of Concord, not the Lutheran Book of Concord. And uh, it's uh, one of the big arguments within the, the Book of Concord is that it consistently says this is what the Church has always taught. <laughs> And so it is the one true faith. But we also confess that there is one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Um, and uh, 
we are both part of that church Catholic. Yep, and for which we have a tremendous amount of respect for. Yes. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, we might poke fun at the Pope as much as we do anybody else. All right. But eh, you know what? I got a lot of respect for the guy. You know, I don't agree with it, a lot of his teachings. I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that he says uh, and some of the stuff that he does. But you know, at the same time, um, boy, I got a whole lot more in common than him with a, than with a certain director of, you know, Robocop. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, and seriously, I mean, um, we may disagree, but we can disagree in fun and disagree respectfully. Um, I have no problem saying that I think the Roman Catholic Church is wrong in its teaching, and I have no problem if, uh, Scotty, if you were to turn around and say, well, I think you guys are wrong. It's mm -hmm. fine. It doesn't bother me a bit, you know? Um, the important thing is that we both try to hold firm to the faith as we know it, believe it, and confess it. And yeah. realize that one day we will be together in heaven, and we will know all things. Then you'll find out that we were right. But that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, this is this is something that called a joke. Okay, don't take that too seriously. Yeah. Th this is something that I, you know, I always struggle with on this show, and I always kind of wonder about. You know, we're not trying to offend anybody. We're just having some fun, and um, you know, and and obviously, if people that watch this are not always going to agree with what we say. And that's why we always welcome your feedback. And so, uh, Scotty, if you watch this, um, really appreciate, you know, your feedback too. Really happy to hear it. And, you know, we're not always going to agree with everything that, uh, people say when they write to us either. But, you know, I, I always, I'm always trying to find that line, um, you know, between, you know, just, just having fun and, you know, and being offensive. And, you know, part of it is, People, a lot of people have certain expectations of, of all pastors, and and it, something tells me that Jim and I are probably not, um, you know, what most people expect of, of sort of your typical pastor, and uh, you know maybe that's good and maybe it's not, and so you know I just like to hear from people, you know, what do you think? Because if we're saying stuff that's this really upsetting people, if we're you know maybe make making a little too light of things or, you know, or something like that. We, we want to know about that. We, you know, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody and, um, you know, and, and so I definitely want to, um, you know, take people's considerations or, you know, people's concerns into consideration. So, um, he, he, and that so to, for me too, he, he spoke for me. Yeah. No, maybe you have more comments. Okay, if you're seeing this on YouTube or something, obviously you can go ahead and comment right there, just like he did, and we'll get word of it. Uh, you can also write to us at podcast at crossfeednews.com, and we will get the, the comment there. We've gotten some great ones from George and from other people uh, that way. You can call yep. us at... If the line's still up, I haven't checked it lately, mm. um, but it's the number is 206-350-4749. Um, or if you're watching this in iTunes, you just click on the screen and it'll take you to our feedback page. So, um, definitely. And, and also a reminder, anybody that is, that if you are watching this, um, on YouTube or wherever, or one of the other, um, uh, places where you can watch this, uh, this is available as a podcast or you can just go to our website, crossfeednews.com and, and watch it there. Just click on the, uh, podcast link and, uh, and, so you can watch the video, and it's actually a little better quality uh, if you watch it on the site or if you get it as a as a video podcast than what you get um, on YouTube because YouTube and, and those sites, they convert it um, into their uh, special format, and so you'll lose some quality that way. So it's still not, you know, high definition or anything, but you don't really want to see every pore on our faces anyway, so, you know. It's good to be back again. Uh, we are sorry that uh, things worked out, that uh, we were able to make it. Uh, Dale floods, and Dale got ill, and then my vacation came up, and just like things just kept popping up here and there. But hopefully we'll be back and uh, to share uh, with you again. We do thank you for, for watching and taking part, and pray that God would give you a good week in His grace. Good night, everybody. God bless you.